get the, the uh, scale you know, leveled and uh, adjusted this way. So the last thing we're going to do on the lathe before we actually move it back against the walls, we're going to just put some of these clips and they're going to hold the wires in place, you know, in some strategic locations. So I got some 1024 screws, I got the uh, pilot drill and the tap and we're going to locate some good spots for them and get them drilled and installed and then we'll get ready to move it back. So now I'm kind of like moving this around here and I'm, I'm just finding a, a good spot to put it on. This cable is going to stay intact because the reed head on the cross slide doesn't move. It's the scale that moves. So I could, you know, I could get this kind of tight. And uh, this looks like a nice spot right here. So I'm just putting the clip and in a nice spot here, and I'm going to just center punch it. Now this is just a two flute tap, it just, it doesn't really get the chips caught up in them, it's a pretty nice tap. Now all you guys who, who are doing this on a South Bend, this is a good spot because the, there's no real interference from the the taper attachment, it won't hit over in this area. And I got a little room to adjust it. It's nice, these clips really hold the cable pretty firmly. I don't know if they got like a little rib in there or something, but they do a great job. Even hand tight, you know? Keeps it good. <clears throat> Let me give it a little bit more room. Something like that. A little bit better. Okay. All right, I got this thing laid on here, and you know we're gonna have to drill some holes, obviously, and we're gonna have to mark it and cut this little section right out here, just to be able to fit around this clip. So let me do that. Let me, I'm, you know, I'm gonna measure out here. I'll cut this out. I'll transfer the holes. Do all that. Uh, on either side and then we'll drill it and then we'll come back and we'll mount it. Alright, we got our notch put in here. I've taken some length off of here so this will clear the reed head and we're going to put it in place right now. Okay, that fits good. Alright, just bolting this cover down onto the scale and because I don't have a proper Allen key this is going to take a little while. Alright, now we're going to mount the head unit to the machine. I've spent a lot of time looking at the back of my machine, where was the greatest place to look, you know, to mount it, and you know, I, I even considered buying another one of these um, these little offsets here. This is part of my uh, my taper attachment, which actually goes on the other side, but <clears throat> thinking of a great way to mount it, you know, this clamps right to the bed, but I said forget it. I found this hole right here, and what this hole does is this this basically adapts the collet. The, there's a, a lever closer attachment you could get for this machine, but I have a hand, a hand closer here, so this hole is just sitting here, and it can be used. So the idea I came up with was to have a piece of metal that comes out, short, you know, maybe two, three inches or whatever, 
just enough to clear the electrical switch and it'll come out, it'll bolt into there and then it'll come up and have a, a bit of a stem piece hooked to it um, where I can attach this portion right here. So now uh, it, it'll, it'll just make for a very compact design. Right, so the, you know, the piece will come out there, I'll be able to attach it, and it will look sort of like this. Just giving you a quick, quick little look. It'll be nice and compact, and it will rotate and everything like that. There's really no need for me to be moving the head unit and stuff like that. So, given the, <clears throat> given the mounting hole that's just sitting there, the opportunity to use it, and, uh, you know, it's less fabrication, it's less holes in the machine. That's the way we're going to go. So basically, I'm going to take some measurements now, and I'm going to fabricate a piece that will have a hole that we can we can go we can adapt into, bolt it down, and uh, we'll make this piece now. So we're beginning with um, we're drilling a 7/16 through hole to accept the bolt to attach it. we're through. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to deburr this edge, right? Cuz I cleaned it up. We'll deburr the hole and then we're going to mark it and we're going to cut it off in the bandsaw uh, down to length. Um, and then, you know, we'll we'll bring it back to the mill. We'll get it set up so we can put some mounting holes for the uh, for the piece that stands up tall. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to drill two holes, the 1024 holes, and it's going to be for the two bolts here to adapt the long stem portion of the mount. beautiful Oop, there goes my tap <laughs> so it didn't really go all that far down but I'm just trying to get a nice tap established I'll just finish them off by hand these these little delicate holes you know you just want to take it easy with them all right I'm gonna move this table out now to my specified location basically moving it three hundred thousandths off center on each side is just a nice way to space them out might have gone down all the way for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bottoming tap now and uh, and finish these off. I'll do it off camera. I love these little Noga tools, man. They are really good, really handy. All right, well, we got our piece done. So this is going to be the first part now that bolts to the, um, the headstock and will allow the second piece, the one that sticks up from here, to bolt to it. Now this was the, the really the perfect piece of metal because it actually gives me a little bit of adjustment. I can kind of tilt this a little bit and, uh, and it worked out pretty good. So I'm not, I'm not going to go tighten this thing down right now. But So there you go. Now when I take these out I can measure the other piece so this is going to bolt on just like that. So we're kind of looking down the post here, the way I have the camera rigged. All right, we have the post bolted on now. So we have the smaller mounting bracket bolted um, behind behind this post. And we have two uh, 1024 bolts holding this in place. And it's very, very strong, very rigid. I can't really move it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
I'm going to actually go back and use this, uh, this bar again. Uh, originally I wasn't going to use it, but I'm not going to mount anything up here, any wide plate or nothing. What I'm going to do is just drill a quarter twenty here and here and, you know, bolt it right through, just the through bolt, just like that. And then, uh, you know, then I can mount this and do whatever I have to do. And I'm probably going to put it on the other side, which is uh, facing the machine out that way. So let's get some holes drilled and we'll bolt this thing right up now. Alright, so we got an inch and a half in between each hole here. So we'll just mark three quarter. And I'm just I'm just eyeballing this right in the center. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one hole and I'm going to mount this and then I'm going to see if I need to pivot this okay because what that will do is that, that will actually pivot the uh, the reed head uh, the reed head the the actual DR, DRO unit um, yeah I'm just thinking about that now I, I should have this able to pivot so let me mark this out now All right, we mounted the DRO unit to this post, and uh, and it really, really is proving to just put this thing as straight as possible. There's going to be a lot of adjustment that needs to be made, you know, with tightening it down and everything. So I'm going to just simply transfer these holes right here, and uh, redrill the last hole here up on the mill, and we'll get it mocked up now. So we'll be back once we're done drilling this. Uh, I'm going to have to tweak this a little bit. Get it to fall straight. But as a quick reference, I just want to see where I'm at. Yeah. 